Right now on the CBS2 News at 637, tornadoes reported across LaSalle County and the damage is devastating. One person is dead, dozens of homes are destroyed. Ottawa, one of the hardest hit areas as well. Governor Rauner will tour the area today as homeowners begin surveying the damage. We do have team coverage for you of those severe storms this morning. CBS2 Susanna Song has a look at the damage in Naplate. Mike Puccinelli has been live in Ottawa all morning. Let's start off with him. Good morning, Mike. Hi, good morning. We're about 85 miles southwest of the loop right now. Behind me, you can see the intersection of Campbell and State Street. This is the picturesque river town of Ottawa, and definitely it has been ravaged by this tornado system. The late winter storm roared into the town of 19,000 people just before 5 o'clock. Many people saw the twister actually touch down. It tore apart homes, snapped trees, shattered windows, and knocked out power. One person was killed, and more than a dozen were injured. The storm prompted the governor to activate the state's emergency operations center to help residents deal with the recovery. David Johnson Sr. is just hoping his son survives. The 31-year-old was hit and critically injured by a falling tree. The wind blew and they were going across from one house to the other. He sustained injuries to his head. We'd ask that people don't come to the area to try to, we're trying to keep the area as secure as possible, assess damage, again, constantly looking, make sure there's no people injured or, or anything like that. At last check, David Johnson Jr. was suffering from bleeding in the brain, among other injuries. The family, as you heard, just hoping he can pull through. Now, as we once again look live at the street, as we begin to see the sun come up, you can get a better look at this street, this one of many that is blocked right now by tree limbs, and police have blocked off many of the other streets, preventing us to get in there to really get a look at the damage, but we hope that we'll be able to get in there in the next few moments. Of course, the governor will be here at 9.30 this morning, where he has planned a news conference at the convalescent center that was struck causing some 60 elderly residents of that center to be evacuated yesterday. Reporting live in Ottawa, Mike Puccinelli, CBS2 News. Back to you, Lionel. Aaron. Our hearts go out to those people in that town. Mike, thank you. Stay calm. Stay calm. It's okay. It's okay. Really scary moments as a family spotted a tornado while driving in Washburn, Illinois. At least eight houses in that town were damaged. Here in the city, the storms left flooded viaducts as well. Chicago police blocking the roads as cars continue to get stuck at 63rd and State. Some drivers also tried driving through a flooded viaduct at 69th and Low. Also rescue in South Suburban Homewood for the very same reason. Firefighters pulling a child from that car that got stalled in water last night under a viaduct at Park and Dixie Highway. She was with her mom who got out safely. Rescuers were able to push the car out of the way. 6.32 right now. Time to get a look at traffic and weather together. Good morning to Megan. How are things? Yeah, now they're okay, but um, that will not be the case when people wake up and see the damage that has been done by the tornado activity and that was out over western parts of our area last night. Uh, now we're talking about several reports of tornadoes, in fact, seven to be exact, but the National Weather Service has to send crews out, survey teams, and they'll do that in a couple hours' time. They'll let us know if this was several tornadoes that touched down a couple of times, if there were seven separate tornadoes, or if it was just perhaps two uh, that touched down several times. So they don't know yet, uh, therefore we don't know yet, but we do know that there were reports of tornado activity in Bennington, in fact, two of them there, one in Washburn, one in Standard, one in Ottawa. That is a confirmed tornado. There was one casualty there. Marseilles, another tornado report, and another out here in Morris. And so at this point, we're looking at calming weather conditions, dropping temperatures, basically dry out there right now, but I can see rain slash snow back on off to the north and west, and that is working in our general direction set to arrive here as a rain, then eventually a chance of snow a little bit later on today. Now, there are no weather alerts out there at the moment. Temperatures are currently dropping. We're to uh, 41 degrees at Gary and Midway, 42 O'Hare. And Derek, we're going to see a little bit of snow before this day is done. All right, Megan. Well, we've been talking about it for a while, and here it comes. Right now, we're looking at delays as we go inbound on the Dan Ryan at 31st Street. Uh, 31st Street in, really, it'll start at 47th Street, and I'll show you that when we get to the maps. But the inbound trip will now take 30 minutes from 95th to downtown. On the Bishop Ford, we have slower traffic from Sibley to 130th Street, 17 minutes to get to the Dan Ryan. And then again at 47th Street, we slow down. We really slow down. 15 miles an hour are the speeds we were looking up there at 31st. 
31st Street, and it will continue that way and get slower into the burn interchange. Aaron and Lionel. Derek, thank you. We continue our team coverage right now of the tornadoes. Let's get over to CBS 2 Susanna Song in Naplate, Illinois. Good morning, Susanna. Good morning, Lionel and Aaron. This is just one glimpse, one picture of the destruction left behind here in Naplate. If we pan across this residential street, you can see the destruction. Utility poles down, debris scattered across the residential street, several homes damaged here, signs down, trees down, just an incredible sight here. Moments ago, we did hear from the fire chief, John Nevins. He estimates about 50 of the 200 homes that uh, are here in this town had some sort of damage. This is a very small town outside of Ottawa. Only about 500 people live here. There were several injuries, just minor. A few people did have to go to the hospital last night. The tornado is believed to have come from the west and tore through the town yesterday evening. Sirens went off 15 minutes before touchdown, which helped save lives. We so were very thankful. You know, it, people are going to be. Uh, you know, disrupted in their lives by the damage that it caused them. Um, but we're we're really fortunate that there were just minor injuries. It's bad. I, um, windows are shattered. I have like no roof. Um, it's it's just bad. A live look now here at the destruction. You can see a piece of tarp now hanging from one of the utility poles. If we pan down more debris on the street, you can see the fire chief to my left walking down with what appears to be a resident. Just so much destruction here and fire chief also cautioning residents not to just come out right away this morning, even though uh, they probably have a lot of anxiety to want to clean up. Just take your time. Let officials go through and assess the damage first. Again, so so much damage here in the small town of Naplate. We should get a better idea when the sun is officially out to know exactly uh, what kind of damage this tornado left behind. We are live in Naplate. Susanna Song, CBS 2 News. Yeah, really just devastating for those families. Susanna, thank you. The Red Cross also setting up an emergency shelter in the gym at Ottawa Township High School to help the victims whose homes were damaged by the tornado. Volunteers you see here are bringing in food, water, and other supplies. We're told no one spent the night, but the Red Cross is preparing to serve a warm breakfast to everyone this morning. All right, here, take a look at this huge tornado. This is in Ottawa. It was one of several reported in LaSalle County. The National Weather Service will head there today to get a better idea of just how many tornadoes actually touched down. But the recovery effort, of course, is already underway. James Joseph from the Illinois Emergency Management Agency is on the phone with us this morning. Good morning, uh, Mr. Joseph. Can you tell us how are the agencies from across the state responding? Yeah, so we had uh, a great deal of local mutual aid first. We had fire service and police mutual aid throughout the area that was supporting in the immediate response. And we have state agencies that are standing by to assist as needed. Uh, we haven't had many requests for state agency support yet, but we do have the Illinois Department of Transportation helping in some communities. We do have the Illinois State Police uh, helping out with uh, security and, and providing additional support for traffic control, specifically in the Ottawa area as well as other parts of Southern Illinois. But uh, like you said, now we're waiting for the Weather Service now to confirm some of these tornadoes as they get out this morning. Uh, we had reports of anywhere from 15 to 16 uh, different touchdowns throughout the state of Illinois yesterday. So a very busy night for our state team as well as our responders on the ground. Yeah, big morning ahead as well. Really quickly, the governor activating the state emergency operations center, as we mentioned. How is that helping, though, with the cleanup efforts? What exactly does that do? So the State Emergency Operations Center being active, uh, the governor doing that makes every state resource available. So if there is, uh, uh, like I mentioned, we have state police, we have Illinois Department of Transportation that are supporting a variety of efforts that are, that are occurring. Uh, that makes one phone call, the, the one phone call to the state, and we have all those state agencies and those resources available in our Emergency Operations Center in Springfield so we can get uh, the resources as quickly as possible to the impacted communities uh, to help them now move into the recovery phase of this event. All yeah, right. really all hands on deck. Yes. James, James Joseph, Joseph. Uh, joining us, excuse me, from the Illinois Emergency Management Agency this morning. And remember, you can always get weather alerts straight to your smartphone or tablet. Just download the CBS2 weather app, find it in the App Store or on Google Play.